Hello and welcome to Almond Finance and Wealth Report, your source for all the latest happenings in the world of business and beyond. It's always such a pleasure to have you join us on the program. I am your host, Jennifer Ubiji-Ubi. Once again, welcome. On this week's edition, we begin by joining Faith and her guests on the town hall as they continue their discussion on Bank Assurance, a second look for growth for the insurance industry. Will Bank Assurance really solve the distribution problems of the insurance industry? All these and more will form the basis of the discussion on the town hall this week. As always, it's a no hold back session. No insurance company today will pay agency commission to someone that is not registered. On this edition also, we'll bring you highlights of the first annual cyber security conference organized by the Guardian newspaper recently here in Lagos. And not forgetting our industry icon segment. These and more are what we have lined up for your viewing pleasure this week, so just sit back, relax and enjoy. Details in just a bit. Do you know if a child, a spouse, a parent or a sibling depends on you and your income, you need life let us say in the capital cities of, uh, of, of the states. Lagos alone in Nigeria now, we have over two third of oh, the insurance institutions in Nigeria here. <laughs> so if you go further again, then even the, the, the states, only few that will, branches outside the capitals, some good towns or large towns. Then go to the brokers too. They are the professionals. They will give the, the, the client the professional sure. advice, follow in on writing, on getting the best uh, terms, and conditions and in terms of claims too. So by the, the time we look at the brokers again, we find out that uh, because by law, brokers are not uh, supposed to have many uh, offices as possible. So we find them, some of them are in one or two offices. So if you check, we find out that the agencies too, how many agents do we have in Nigeria? And there's a large turnover of agents in Nigeria here. Yeah. Most companies find it difficult maintaining agents. agents. Either they, they have this one today, within a short time, that one goes off, goes away. So even some life companies, there's only a few that are still having a good agency network. network. So we find out that uh, the branches or branch office of insurance companies that compare with the, uh, added to the brokers and agencies are not enough. If you compare the ratio of uh, the, num or the number of companies to the com to individuals in Nigeria, look at the population, check the offices, find out the ratio, there's a wide gap. So, but if you look at uh, the bank deposit, and like I said, the deposit of banks compared to GDP, you see that it is very, very, uh, very, very large. So, by the time you now look at the banks, I remember around the 70s or 80s, there was this rural banking. And even though there was a compulsion let of, to ask them to uh, put the branches in this area, but it helps to increase the banking habits. So, and that one, we are trying to leverage. By the time you see, you have more number of banks. Look at it from here. Before you go here, now you see number of banks, but before you can see any insurance office. <laughs> so that is the way. So we want to leverage on that situation. It is not that the brokers are precluded, because if you look at the, even some companies already, we when embraced, we embraced the issue of uh, universal banking. And now some companies also has a holding structure. The brokers also see protected, because by the guideline, they are also protected, because the, 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 the bank, Insurance company that having in, within that holding arrangement cannot also enter into bank. They can also have to go to another bank. So you have to also go to another bank. So in fact, that the brokers only dispensable uh, I mean, role is also still there. But the only try we're trying to look at the the cost effectiveness and also reaching especially the retail market. Because my colleague um, mentioned before, all those uh, not only loans. 
we have even marine insurance. Some of them that also need uh, maybe import or export, one of them, they also have to go through the bank channel. Bank will also make sure that uh, they refer these people to insurance companies. And moreover, more uh, banking and insurance com will come, I mean, products, some of them are complementary. Like uh, even uh, mortgage loan. Yeah, By the time you take mortgage loan, you may take, take life insurance. Or you yeah, are buying car. Banks will also look at the, the, the profile of, of the companies, of individuals they have. No, the ones that can also get all this, they can even offer you some loans. You see them, some of them testing you, sending you some information, you can even get consumer loan or car loan. And at the same time, they are also more secure if those things are also insured by insurance companies. So both those ones that you already know that there are a potential and there, are, there may be also future potential of entering into insurance, these ones will also help to ensure that we have a large clientele from the bank. And by the time, bank also uses them as a fee income. It will also add their own names and this insurance company will also end. Mr. Olainka, I was going to ask you this question. Now, we do know in the era of universal banking, some banks you walk in and they say, oh, you want to collect a loan, go to our insurance company. They were compelling, compelling people to do that. We do know like the new guideline is trying to work around all that. But for those insurance companies that do not have a holding, um, structure they are not in a holding arrangement that okay they have a parent company or a sister company or a subsidiary that can that is a bank and all of that how would they play in bank insurance well the regulation the guideline you know, put forward by NICOM has allowed it that you can have relationship even where you are not into uh, uh, any with having a relationship with any holding company or in you know, bank and this could be done that you can, that the, the issue is just that there, there must be a relationship and an agreement between the insurance company and the bank. Once that is and the the, 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 the the basis of the agreement are also listed there in terms of the mode of payment of premium, exit, the relationship and you know, so many things are in there. But in terms of at least the contractual relationship was first established and it has to be approved by NICOM. Once it's not approved by NICOM, of course, it's not allowed. And for those that have holding companies, of course, once you are relating with your holding, I mean, with your, uh, com the company within your holding group, within your group, of course, you are restricted to that. And that's the way thing within the guideline, you know, has put it. Okay, now overall, how cost effective would you say uh, bank assurance is going to be for, uh, especially for companies who don't have, who are not in a, like a group? Oh, fine, it's quite cost effective. The uh, guideline says for each of the branches, there must be a staff of the insurance company there representing the insurance company. So it's not for the banker, that is the staff of the banking. Uh, 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 the bank to sell insurance. No. Can we really eliminate that? Well, <laughs> it's possible. Other, other it's possible. No, no, there's a referral. <laughs> yes. referral. Yes. There's a referral. Let me know. I agree it's a referral, but yeah. you are referring. No, if you refer to the staff in that office. Because if you are not a licensed agent, you cannot be one commission. And for, I mean, generally. We are in Nigeria, Mr. Olayinka. Notwithstanding, okay. if you are not a licensed agent, <laughs> there is no way you can earn the commission. Whether in Nigeria or wherever. <laughs> yes. The, the, maybe the worst, or unquote now, the worst that people could do is that to, to, to have a relationship with someone who is licensed. No insurance company today will pay agency commission to someone that is not registered. Because NICOM looks into the books, the regulation is very stringent now. Yeah more than ever before and in fact you know what insurance companies will say well uh, uh, the fear of nikon <laughs> the beginning of of wisdom. Wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with you know strict regulation you know, stringent regulations and it's open everybody knows the standard nobody will do that any longer and if there is any, any of the uh, banking staff has a relationship with the insurance company well with the staff it's of the insurance, insurance company, company. well that's fine it's still referral it won't be the person that is not presenting, but rather it will be the staff of the insurance company that is presenting. And remember, the payment must be made direct because an account will be created within the bank 
where the premium has to be paid. And of course, accounted for. And in terms of the settlement of the commission, I think that will be done on a regular basis. For that, talking about that cost effectiveness. Yes. You see, uh, okay, let us take for instance now the broker and the agent now. The agency, uh, now before uh, we have, have part time or full time agents, but we are talking about, let us look at composite agents. You, they may also earn commission. There may also be some allowances attached to such things. So if you check both the commission and allowances, the agents also earn compared to what we are going to pay out as a commission to the bank assurance. It's also lower. What we are paying as a bank or commission as a bank assurance is lower. And then you know that the agents now, over time, they will also have entrenched themselves into the company. And the company will also have a lot of responsibilities, even welfare programs. As, but these ones will be eliminated under bank assurance. You only have your internal, the staff, then the businesses come to you. Then the acquisition costs, of even transportation costs to the clients, you know, not even in one day. Just like the broker also maintains an office, he has staff who will pay salary. That's also transport himself, or either in Abuja here, I can even <laughs> enter <laughs> plane to go there, or even wherever, go to transport. Those costs added to the commission, you find out that it's even, even though insurance company will not pay those, or that is the commission, and then his own cost will also be, if you look at them together, the cost of getting one, that one, one business, you know, like 10,000 naira, you might even have spent more. No. But if you come through this uh, retail, through this bank assurance, you, know, you find out that there is, is also very, very low. We are not saying bank assurance will also supplant agency and other business, but at least it will also help us to also ensure that we penetrate more to the other news and companies where we have not been before. And as time goes on now, other channels will also find where they also have some issues or challenges with, and then address. And by the time these channels, you know, oh, overseas, they have a multiple channels. Apart from the online, you have all these, all these channels, they will also grow. So that uh, we can say, ah, we are um, having up to 200 billion naira from the Bank of channel, brokers too, because brokers control the market now, over 70% or more. The agencies also, the agencies are there. But like I said before, the agency, the turnover rate is very, very, High, very very high. I believe we maintain agents because from time to time this one moves. Why is it so difficult to maintain agents in the uh, no. in India, for example? Yeah. It, it we're talking is an is an agents market. Okay, okay. The the commission paid to agents uh, most organizations are in a, on a sliding scale. Why is it on a sliding scale? Because one, the 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 the, the incidence of uh, loss or death is more within the earlier years. So by the time your acquisition cost, so by the time it is reducing now, you can have a commission starting with a thirty percent or forty percent decreasing, while some also only few companies also have level. You can have half. So the where agencies are, some agents now have M twenty, thirty, forty, then and up to three, four years now. Either they tend to surrender, cause the the, the the client to surrender the policy, and then to take up another one where they will also earn more commission. <laughs> this is possible. Or the find that the other company pays higher commission and also have more welfare program for them to. While some companies will say, we only pay you based on commission you earn, and we don't have anything. Maybe within the first three months, we pay you some allowances for you to transport, and by the time you are stable within six months, we no longer pay you any other commission apart from commission you earn from businesses you generate. Okay, Mr. Laika, do you think that practice has actually helped um, the insurance industry? Well, it's a uh, standard practice. General practice, like the example you gave, relates to the life business. But in the case of the general business, the law, the Nigerian law, stipulates that agents are entitled to 50% of the broker's commission. Sure. Bearing in mind that, of course, agents don't maintain offices. Yeah. And here we don't have corporate agents. What we have is from the individual mm -hmm. agents. Mm -hmm. And with the individual agents, of course, 50% of that is good enough. But however, in terms of uh, the, 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 the number at various times. Most of the agents that we have, so many people use uh, agency as um, <laughs> just a stop in the car in the sense that whilst we are waiting for greener pasture, let's do this, particularly a number of the graduates now. But by the time they enter into it, you know, they get into it, and we, for those of them that are very serious with it, you can even earn more than the managing director of the insurance company. 
if they are very serious. In the U.S., a yes. lot of people solely all they do is agency. Agency, of course. And some of them will earn much more than the managing director of the company. But here we are not that exposed, you know. But I believe that. Would you say we are not that yeah. exposed, or the industry has not made it very attractive for people? Well, it's not really graduates. the. Okay, it's not really the industry. I mean, the the the, 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 the law has set a standard. Fifty percent of whatever is due to the broker is due to the agent. It's for the agent now to now annex, sit down and now say, look, what's my target? My target is X. I do I achieve X. And until when people get committed and take insurance agency as a lifetime venture, like an entrepreneur, the, the issue that we have in terms of people resigning will still continue. Okay, Mr. Olaika, have you looked, because if you are talk, talking about other clients, like in the UK or in the US you talked about, you don't need to preach too much really for people to buy insurance. But here, if I'm a fresh graduate and I'm coming out, I know even in my family, it's difficult for me to come and start preaching insurance to them. They won't answer me. So it's... <laughs> yeah, the awareness. Uh, awareness. The awareness yes, it's, so it's, it's not just like graduates are not serious. But the, the, the business or the products you want them to go and sell, which is insurance, is a difficult sell. I agree with you that insurance is a difficult sell. However, even in the US, in the UK that we are talking about, uh, there was a study that revealed that even householders insurance in the US, so many people will not even buy. That's why the fact that they are you know, aware. aware of the importance of it, the need for it, and even the law backing. Okay. But here, uh, people not buy insurance, I would say one, uh, due to lack of knowledge. Two, uh, some would say in terms of experience in the past or experience of others. others of course. back. Moving on, we now bring you highlights of the cybersecurity conference organized by Guardian Conferences and Masterclasses recently here in Lagos at the Federal Palace Hotel. The theme was Monitoring, Detection and Prevention – Keys to Organizational Growth. Speakers were Mr. Musa Itopa of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Odubiyi, Commissioner of Science and Technology, Lagos State and a host of others. Enjoy. Cybercrime is a fast-growing area of crime. More and more criminals are exploiting the speed, convenience and anonymity of the internet to commit a diverse range of criminal activities that know no borders. Since today's business world is more interconnected than ever before, companies are looking for ways to take advantage of increased connectivity while reducing the risk of theft, fraud and abuse. Guardian Conferences and Masterclasses recently put together its first annual cybersecurity conference of 2017 at the Federal Palace Hotel. The theme was Monitoring, Detection and Prevention – Keys to Organizational Growth. Welcoming participants to the conference, the chairman and publisher of the Guardian newspaper, Lady Maiden Alex Ebrew said that the internet is no doubt the greatest technology for mankind but unfortunately also the most destructive. Cyber criminals may use computer technology to access personal information, business trade secrets or use internet for exploitative or malicious purposes. Criminals can also use computers for communicating and performing these illegal activities and are often referred to as hackers. In short, 
I think it's the greatest technology of man, the flights, the aeroplane, and other things. But as we're well aware, it's probably the most destructive. Delivering his goodwill message, Mr. Musa Itafajima, Head Payment System Policy and Oversight, Central Bank of Nigeria, stated that the CBN is working with relevant stakeholders to establish a security information system to eradicate incidents of e-payment fraud. The Central Bank of Nigeria, along with relevant stakeholders, are exploiting ways to establish an industry security operating center, SOC and the Risk Information Center to consolidate our strength at eradicating e-payment fraud to the barest minimum and enhancing trust in our payment system. Trust is very significant in our payment system. Without trust, nobody will use your payment system. And therefore, your cards and other electronic payment tokens may not be accepted outside of this country. So trust is a major concern for us. The benefits of ICT to the ease of doing business in the 21st century cannot be overemphasized. Also delivering the Google message on behalf of the Governor of Lagos State, the Honorable Commissioner for Science and Technology, Mr. Femi Odubi, said that promoters of cybersecurity must be dynamic because cyber criminals are continually evolving. It is very important to note that whatever strategies that are already in operation or would be recommended for implementation, including legal provisions, processes, and procedures, must be subject to periodic review to ascertain their effectiveness in the face of changing realities. It is very vital, considering the fact that cybercrime strategies are continuously evolving. Counter cybercrime strategies must therefore be dynamic and preemptive in order to forestall the potential colossal damage which may be monumental in terms of financial loss or threat to organizations going forward. In his presentation, Mr. Kola Olutimein, CEO Makeway International UK, said that understanding our vulnerability and its impact on organization enables companies to put measures in place. Understanding our vulnerability and the impact that it would have on our organization help us to then have what I call the risk responses in place. The risk responses in place. Where, for example, you have the risk avoidance, which is saying we have a risk that something might happen, a threat might happen, and avoidance would be say, okay, let's not even do it. Let's move away from the cause of it. Or you could have a risk reduction, which is saying, Okay, because you know it might rain and it might cause some flooding, let's put something in place. Let's put a pump in place to pump out the water as soon as it is raining. Just make sure we have something to deal with it. In this digital era, a cybersecurity attack can come from anywhere. As such, security should be at the top of every organization's agenda unless they want to be caught on their blind side. All the speakers were Mr. Anthony Maxwell, Senior Partner, Lockwire Security, East Midlands, UK, Engineer Ikechuku Namani, Founder and Chief Executive Officer, Dimadio Systems Limited, and a host of others. There is no doubt that ICT has made life and even businesses easier. However, the role of the business sector is vital for cyber security, especially companies in the internet industry. Listen up as Faith Awarde brings you our Pigeon English program, Waiting Insurance They Do Safe, with different guests every week, airing live on Niger FM 102.7 at 9.45 a.m. every Wednesday. And that's where we draw the curtains on this week's edition. I do hope you enjoyed every moment spent with us. Do join us again next week for another interesting episode. For now, do feel free to connect with us on all our social media platforms. And don't forget that this program also airs on BCOS Television in Badon every Thursdays at 6 p.m. Good news, as Waiting Insurance They Do Said Pigeon English newspaper is now in circulation and it's absolutely free. Do make sure you get a copy for yourself as you can learn a thing or two about insurance and pension in Pigeon English. I'm pretty sure you're going to love it. With that said, we call it a wrap on today's edition. My name is Jennifer of BTW. Many thanks for watching and bye for now.